Commissioner. At this time, I call the April 14th, 2022 meeting of the County Commission to order. We have with us tonight Pastor Stephen Rayner, pastor of the Salem Baptist Church in the Woodlawn community of Lincoln County to give our invocation. And Commissioner Henderson will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance of the Flag. Commissioner Collins is not here. Reverend Rayner, if you go to the podium. For the prayer tonight, I wanted to read a passage of scripture in Psalm chapter 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour out speech night after night. They communicate knowledge. There is no speech, there are no words, their voice is not heard. Their message has gone out to all the earth, and the words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, he has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a groom coming from the bridal chamber. It rejoices like an athlete running a course. It rises from one end of the heavens and circles to the other end. Nothing is hidden from its heat. The instruction of the Lord is perfect, renewing one's life. The testimony of the Lord is trustworthy, making the inexperienced wise. The precepts of the Lord are right, making the heart glad. The command of the Lord is radiant, making the eyes light up. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are reliable and altogether righteous. They are more desirable than gold, than any abundance of pure gold, and sweeter than honey, which comes from the honeycomb. In addition, your servant is warned by them. There is great reward in keeping them. Who perceives his unintentional sins, cleanse me from my hidden faults. Moreover, keep your servant from willful sins. Do not let them rule over me, then I will be innocent and cleansed from blatant rebellion. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, Lord, my God, and my Redeemer. Will we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. Can't hear good, but I heard a phone. If you would silence your phones or, or turn them off, one of the two. <clears throat> Watch mine ring. I think I got it on. <laughs> Commissioner Collins, that was him I was talking to a few minutes ago. He's coming through Appling. He coming out of Augusta and got behind an accident on I-20 and held him up for about an hour. But he is en route. Before we begin the meeting, I would like to recognize two people that are here tonight in the audience. One is the former chairman of the county commission, Mr. Tommy Drew. Tommy Drew is with us tonight. Tommy, it's good to have you. And former commissioner Daryl Henderson, I think I saw, did I? Yes. Former commissioner Henderson, and he's the father of Commissioner Henderson. So we had two. <laughs> so we're glad to have both of you with us tonight. <clears throat> Is there a motion that we approve the minutes of the previous meetings? So moved, you, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Tanksley. Is there a second? I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Tanksley. Second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let me know. I'm saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. Item six is the approval of the agenda. I want to make a quick um, correction. I'm going to move Captain Taylor from item 13 to item 11. And I'm going to drop Director Bolton from item 11 to item 13, if she doesn't mind. Captain Taylor has a Sheriff's Department duty that he has to be at at least by a little before seven o'clock. So if, if there's no objection to that, then Madam Clerk, if you would make that uh, adjustment on the agenda. Yes, sir. Without any objection, is there a motion that we approve the agenda with the correction? I so move, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? 
I'll second it, Chairman. Commissioner by motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion? Chair is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motions carried. Item number six, departmental reports. Six A is the Office of Emergency Services, Director Casey Broom. Good evening, Chairman, Commissioners. It is always my pleasure to be here. You have my written report, of which I have nothing to add unless there are questions. Okay, you have his written report. Is there any questions to Director Broom? Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to refrain, would restate that. I do would like to update the, the board on the work at Grace Mount. Okay. We did complete it back in, I believe it was January. You approved funds from SPLOS 6 to do repairs to uh, Grace Mountain, the coaxial, coax cables to the antennas, to replace the antennas. That work was completed yesterday. I, I've been listening. I believe that we do have a little bit of a, a better improvement of our radio signal coming to and from the mountain. So I did want to tell you all that. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. 6B is the Recreation Department Director Glaze. Good evening. Good evening. The written report you have in front of you is the report from my advisory board meeting. So we have any questions behind that? Did the splash pad open or are you holding yes, it up? No, sir, it's open. It is open. Yes, sir. Kind of cool. We'll it's it on last uh, Friday. Kids okay. been playing it. Good, good. That's what it's there for. Mm -hmm. um, I did notice in your report that you are looking at the spring of next year of offering flag football. Flag football and also getting with the Board of Education to see can we start a youth track program to have somewhere to run it, see what requirements will be. So these Lincoln County people that are going out of town, we're going to provide a service and they won't have to go. Is that, is yes, that not true? Thank you. I'm glad I'm glad to see that. And I'd also want to make notice that the Eddie Fletcher Park will be opening or has opened it's to open. bear with us. We're running a little late. We're having to do a lot of road work, particularly in the southeast end of county where all the rain, we really got it hit hard in the south and south end. But uh, Director Seymour and Director Glaze, we've discussed it. We're going to have to haul in probably 12 or 15 loads of sand and, and getting, getting the park ready to where it'll, it'll really be pretty by hopefully the time senior day comes along and they want to go down to the park. Any questions, Director Glaze? Thank you. 6C is the Finance Department, Director Doss. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I uh, don't um, have anything to add to my uh, um, printed reports. I would like to give you an update on our, our software upgrade. Um, we have gone fully live on the, uh, the core financials of the ERP Pro system that we're using. They changed the name while we were installing it from uh, ENCODE 10 to ERP Pro. Uh, but we're fully live on that, so we're producing all of our checks. Um, we're doing all of our uh, accounts payable and accounts receivable in that system. We've done two payrolls in that system. We've not had any major issues. It's a few small hiccups when we're changing things, but all of that is working well. Um, and we've implemented the budgeting module. You'll notice that your reports this, this uh, month are different because uh, for the first time we've been using a system to, to produce some of those reports as instead of having to do them by hand. And um, Director Seymour is working with, uh, with his consultants and we still appear to be on track for the end of May, 1st of June to get all of our public, uh, public work software up. So that project is going uh, as well as can be expected and, and we will be completely live chairman by the end of this fiscal year. Which is the end of June. End of June, yes sir. Any questions, Director Dawes? If not, we'll... Director Doss, yes, I am going to need a crash course from the Doss University of Finance to read these new. <laughs> I, I'm old school. I knew how to read them old ones. You're going to have to give me some pointers on this way. I'll know what, yes, what's sir. going we'll, on with this budget. We will get together very soon. 
Okay, item 6D is the Department of Public Works direct signal. Chairman, members of the board, you uh, have my written reports. Um, I do not have anything to add to those unless you have some questions. I'll be more than happy to answer those. Any questions, direct to Seymour? I have one, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Clyde. I, on total number of permits, new home construction, how do we stand now? Um, I believe that we are at 18 so far. 18, yeah, 18 so far. Um, but they're still coming in uh, pretty regular, and, and they seem to be getting more expensive and more expensive. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're still tracking right along. I mean, we're at 18, and we're, you know. Year to date money. compared to last year? Um, I don't have that number compared to last year, um, but I would suspect we're pretty close. I mean, we're we're a third of a third of the year in, and we, you know we did eighty last year, so we're, we're tracking pretty close. Well. well, I think you got eighteen so far this year, and eleven of them in the month of March. Yeah. Because January, February is always, always slow. slow. So it's picking up. I I had to go down to Plantation Point this afternoon, and, and uh, it's five new houses going up in Plantation Point. Four four is under construction. They're clearing the lot for the other one. I noticed. Yeah. Just in in uh, plantation point. So unless something really crashes, it looks like the housing market is still doing well. The the builders tell me that it's still going strong. Um, there's very few places you go and you don't see a new house being built. And that's good, that helps you digest some. Um, any other questions direct to Seymour? If not, thank you. We at the item seven, maintenance of county roads, COVID-19 funds, Ms. Denise Freeman. Ms. Freeman here. Okay, moving right along, item number eight, agenda 21 impact, 2002-2003 land use ordinance, Mr. Al Gray. Mr. Gray, as usual, you, you know the the rules, you have five minutes to address the board. Yes, sir. The county attorney will keep your time and notify you when you're at four. Chairman Norman, members of the commission, much has been written about globalist boss, Klaus Schwab, and his World Economic Forum slogan of Build Back Better. I don't know about you, but that sounds an awful lot like an intent to tear everything down. Even worse, he tells the people of the world, you will own nothing, but you'll be happy. Schwab pushed Globalist Agenda 21, targeted for completion by 2021, the year, based upon terms like stakeholder capitalism, sustainable development, and public-private partnerships. The terms became prevalent in government planning all throughout Georgia with overlay zoning, which came into our region in 1998, with the Evans Town Center overlay, your 2002 land use ordinance, and in 2011 with Augusta Laney Walker overlay. Augusta and, and Evans overlay zoning ran into real trouble because of a failure of written notification of all of the landowners, with both governments forced to re redraw their maps and re-notify everybody. Here is a map that caused the Laney Walker revision. Notice was mailed to only the W4 node up here this brown area, but they wanted to incorporate in the motion the entire map and make that the Laney Walker overlay. And that notice was just mailed out to that one corner. The political might on the side of the proponents was formidable. The prestigious planning award was on the line for the Augusta Mayor. Augusta National's attorney headed support by Augusta tomorrow and was present when the commission voted to reject the overlay. Columbia County had the full support of the Planning and County Commission. It had to re redraw its map and re-notify owners. A citizens committee rewrote its ordinance extensively. Alas, in Lincoln County, the story is different. Public hearings coincided with the county commission's meetings on land use with a reading suspended. Yes, that ordinance has been in effect for 19 years, 
But that does not relieve this body of the duty of equal protection for its citizens or the power to discard proper, proper notif not notification and amendment. Last year, Lincoln County saw failures to meet those duties during the hearings for the Crooked Bridge subdivision and Double Branch's cell tower. With a video camera running on his desk before the planning meeting then, Director Seymour looked for seven minutes for an exemption claim to be in the ordinance and never could find it. When we shifted to the cell phone tower, we mentioned that the tower was less than 150 feet from the road. Yet, when later it came before your body, the director said not once, but twice, that the tower was 1,900 feet. But the tower drawing clearly shows 122 feet. Your own video shows the Verizon representative's uncertainty and discomfort for all who want to see it in this county to watch on the video. That might have been because Verizon will later submit that the structural drawings required were unavailable until the tower was actually ordered. Now how could you have voted that that engineer certification they had submitted and we talked about was valid? Because it, it belonged to a tower that may or may not have been bought. None of the structural drawings were there. Abraham Lincoln wrote of the government, of the people, by the people, and for the people. Your agenda for 2022 sounds to me like it's more government of you, by you, and for yours. No telescope was needed to see these mad times we're in coming. The, state, it's the story of Jacob and Esau is quite instructive. Yes, one minute. Esau got in dire straits of hunger and sold his birthright for a bowl of stew. Having no vigilance, now people are caught in a panic with many selling their birthright of liberty out for a raptured deliverance whose timing is uncertain. <coughs> My birthright of liberty is not yours to possess. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Could you leave a copy of that with us, your boss? Sure. I appreciate it. I'd like to, I'd like to read it a little closer. And, uh, well, um, if you'll leave it with the clerk, or either you can email it to us. Well, know. I can email it. Well, there's an article in the Prince Magazine by Hillsdale College. It's a very conservative publication, and it tells about the history of all this terminology and, and what they call the Great Reset. Okay, if you leave that with us, we'll look at it, and we appreciate you coming. Uh, Item number nine, Farmer's Market, Maggie Shaw, Shea Chamberlain. Farmer's Market request, Maggie Shaw, or Shea Chamberlain. They're not here, we'll move right on. Item number 10 is food pantry request. Ms. Naomi Cobb, I know she's you. Come on, Ms. Naomi. If you would just come to the podium. And you, you and Junior be under the same guidelines. You have five minutes to address the commissioners. County, county attorney will notify you when you have one minute left. Good evening, Commissioner. Good evening. And the other officers. We, the Lincoln County Food Pantry, are in need of several repairs. Um, Deacon Gifford Jr. has some pictures that we would like to share with you. Um, we are grateful to the Commissioner that we are currently occupying 1066 Fire Tire Road as the Lincoln County Food Pantry. And But there are there's a tree in the front that needs to come down. It's, it's, it's splitting and could cause damage to our patrons and to the building. Uh, many repairs needed to be done inside the building. The commissioner has been out already and, and solved some of those uh, inside and out. And so we are here tonight to see if you have any questions, viewing the pictures that one of our volunteers made of some of the repairs needing at the Lincoln County Food Pantry. <coughs> are there any questions? Do you have pictures, pictures you want to leave with us? Yes, sir. We okay. Yes. Do you, would you like to see them, Commissioner? Would you like for us to hold them? Oh, oh, would you like maybe maybe the one to leave? Oh, you, you, you can just, can you leave them with us? We can. Oh, yeah. We can. That Is that, can we? 
Yeah, okay. One of our volunteers printed them for us. If you leave them and if you need them back, you can okay. get them. We can make okay. a copy of it. If you leave them with the clerk, each commissioner will be sent one. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. We also will be leaving a copy of our schedule where we get deliveries from the Golden Harvest Food Bank in Augusta uh, so that boxes will need to be removed following um, when we get deliveries. Um, one of our volunteers was doing it for us, but he's no longer able to do that. And I want to thank Commissioner for um, getting Mr. Seymour to be able to get out and take care of that for us. We'll also be leaving with you a schedule of every other Thursday that we're open so that the ball will be in all of our courts as far as responsibility of trying to keep our grass cut for Lincoln County residents because they are important um, and we just want to respect them and hope that you all will do the same. Are there any questions? Any questions? Thank you. You're welcome. We appreciate it. You want to leave that with Ms. McKellar? With the clerk? With the clerk? All the way over there. You'll leave that with the clerk? Okay. Appreciate the work y'all do, too. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. We served 75 people today in between Holy Week. <laughs> we went to service, came back, and people came back. So thank you so much. And I, I noticed that you called Chairman, uh, uh, kind of Commissioner Group. Song do. I want to open that, open that invitation up for y'all too. So if, when y'all see that y'all can help us out, y'all come on over there and help us out at the food bank. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. While y'all are sitting down, I want to make a comment. We have. I think that's only here. Yes. Yes. It's under, uh, it's under uh, what, 11? No. 10. 10. Here, 10. Yeah. Okay. I got you. I got you. I got it right here. Um, I have it. Ms. Naomi, I, I want to say that on behalf of all the commissioners, we appreciate you. And I see you got a lot of your volunteers with you. I, I recognize a lot of them. And we want to collectively thank each and every one of you for what you do at no cost for the service of the needy, the needy and, and sometimes some of us is not too needy <laughs> to, uh, to, get, to get something. But we, you, you can sit down if you want to, but we, we do appreciate what y'all do. And we have uh, probably did a little neglecting of some of the facilities out there. Well, as you know, Director Seymour and I were out there last, two weeks ago, I think. And um, at the commissioner's work session, we brought all of those things that we talked about to the commissioner. And we are going to, to um, make some, some needy repairs out there. In fact, we're going to vote in just a few minutes of, of the roofs on the two buildings. Uh, we we got bids on them. We we got the bids, and we we're, we're going to be making a motion and a second, and hopefully pass it in just a few minutes. Um, then we want to come and do the the um, rock wood work and some things out there that needs to be done. The buildings in need of being painted again. You got a very dangerous situation with a tree that is. Dead limbs falling off. I saw them on the building yesterday when I rode out there. Um, we got a price on that removing of that tree. It's in a tricky place because of the power lines on one end and the building on the other. So somebody's got to really know what they're doing and, and be bonded and insured before we're going to let them take that tree down, which slowed us up a little bit. And when we only got one price turned into us, uh, we just we decided that we had to have some more prices, and I know Director Seymour's been on the phone today trying to round up some of these people to go ahead and get us a price. I don't want to tell you tonight what I told you, but I don't want to tell it in a meeting tonight what that price was, because then, <laughs> then these other people can lower the price on the creek, so we, we get that, but I do want you to know that we are looking at 
at getting the rest of it done, but I would hope that maybe next week they'll be starting on the on the roof. Director Seymour can tell you when, when he gets that. But we do have uh, a price, and the and the lowest lowest price we had two bids on it, and the lowest one was for for both buildings. Director Seymour, is that right? No, sir. That's just that's just the main building. That's not the uh, the other building. I have a I, I've already gotten one quote on the second building, and I'm waiting on the uh, second. Well, both of those buildings that got to have roofs on. Yes, sir. I understand. Mm -hmm. Well, we're just going to do repairs to the other one. It's not. It's already got a metal roof on it. We're just going to do some repairs to it. This is for a complete new roof on uh, the food pantry itself. The other building has got to have some. Um, just some repairs done to the metal structure. In, other, in other words, if I'm hearing you correctly, you putting a roof on Miss Naomi's and you leaving Junior Hush over there without a roof. No, sir, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> no, sir, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we're going to put a roof on Miss Naomi's building and I'm waiting on a second. I'm waiting on a second. <laughs> I'm waiting on a second price for the other building, Jaron. Yes. Okay, that, the building of the, of the block building that y'all use. And they'll put a new rubber around that mass on the top that comes in. And we'll, we know we're going to fix the ceiling where the water has messed the ceiling up with ceiling tile. We're going we're gonna to fix it up the way you proud of it. I promise you. Um, gentlemen, you all know that we have a bid, low bid of $7,500 for a metal roof to go on the building. We discussed it and talked about it and asked questions at our work session. If um, I'd like to entertain a motion that we award this to Woody Parks Construction Company to put the roof on ASAP on the metal building. So moved, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? I second, Mr. Chair. Have a motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Henderson, that we put a roof on the building. Um, Pretty quick, is, is there, uh, we got a motion, seconds, any discussion? Well, Chairman. Commissioner Tanker. Is there any danger of this tree that we're talking about damaging the new roof before it's taken down? I think, I think we got the roof, the tree taken, pretty much taken care of. I think the roof, I think the tree gonna be gone before the roof's on. Yes. Okay, well, you probably got the other thing. I have not, but I'll have them in the morning. I'll have them tomorrow morning. Uh, the tree will be gone. We, we'll see the tree gone before the roof goes up. But I think we can have a tree down pretty quick. Pretty quick. Which is a, she can submit more pictures if you need them. Oh, we we fine. We we looked at it. We we, we know we know what is bad. Um. So this will this will be paid with probably some of the ARP money that, that comes back in and goes back out. This is how that will be done. So that's how we'll fund most of the expenses out there. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, let me know saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Like sign. And the motion is carried. Y'all welcome to stay. And, and listen to us. I know two of those people probably. <laughs> Thank y'all all for coming. Reverend Ronnie, you know, Reverend Ronnie, you know that I told you that you were welcome to leave anytime you wanted to. So if you leave, don't feel like you hurt, hurt our feelings. Um, if you enjoy watching paint dry, you'll enjoy the rest of this. <laughs> okay, item 11 is the Board of Elections Personnel Director Bolton. No, 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 no. no. Swapped. We're swapped. Oh, here. It's your call. 13. That's right. That's right, I did. Director Taylor, I mean, <laughs> Captain Taylor. Good will. evening, uh, Chairman and County Commissioners. Uh, always a pleasure. Uh, I'm coming tonight for two motions. It's going to be a reference to uh, purchasing of the sheriff's vehicles. Uh, previously, previously, I came in front of the commission, uh, and it was approved in a motion to purchase two Dodge Chargers from Atkins 
uh, Dodge and Winder, Georgia. Uh, we have developed some supply issues that we did kind of see coming, but we were hoping we could squeeze in there and we weren't able to. But what I'm looking tonight is on the first motion is to change the purchase order from Atkins to Wade Ford in Smyrna, Georgia. And it's going to be also changing a PO into, instead of two Dodge Chargers, two what they call Ford uh, SUV interceptors. Um, the price is a little bit more, uh, but I think if you if you have the opportunity to look at both vehicles and even in the long run as far as maintenance goes, you'll see that the uh, Ford Interceptor SUV, which is pretty much to a Ford Explorer, uh, will be a lot less uh, maintenance involved in the uh, Dodge Chargers. Okay. To, to summarize that, I, I think what happened, in, and y'all are thinking the meeting last week at the work session, we were looking at two cars from, from a place in Thomaston, Georgia, uh -huh. that we talked about. But, but that was never, the reason he's making what he's doing now, that never took place. After that meeting, before we could get to this meeting to vote, they sold the cars. So the reason we're having to do this, and we're talking more about acting than the others, because we never acted on, on, on the, what was the name of that place in Thomas? Uh, Southern. Southern forward. So really what we're doing is we're changing it from when we actually voted last month, we were looking at Atkins. Yes, sir. So now we have, make it, we have to have a motion to purchase the vehicle, the two Ford Explorers for the Sheriff's Office from Wade Ford in Smyrna, Georgia. Yes, sir. And uh, Wade Ford has the state contract on uh, Ford products. Okay, and, and we got them pretty much tied down, is that correct? Yes, sir, yes, sir. And I guess we need we need a motion that, when we when we previously approved them, we approved it for $77,000, or not to exceed $77,000. This one's gonna be $78,448 is what we're gonna pay for these two cars. Well, that's gonna be on a separate motion, Chairman, but- Okay. You're, you're correct, on the second motion, we will, the board previously approved uh, the funds for $77,000. What I will need will be an increase of $1,448. What's your first motion? My first motion is to change the PO, the purchase order from Atkins Ford, I mean Atkins Dodge to Wade Ford, to change it from okay. two Dodge Chargers to two Ford. That's Chargers. all you need in that motion? That's all okay. I need in that motion. And then the okay, we, motion, we're gonna need to change the PO from Atkins Ford Atkins Dodge. Huh? Atkins Dodge. Atkins Dodge. Yeah, Atkins Dodge. Two Wade Ford for the two explosions. Yes, sir. All right. I think I got all that. Y'all got it too. Yes, sir. <coughs> now motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. 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 Mr. Motion by Commissioner Tanker, second by Commissioner Henderson. Any discussion on the motion? They're going to they're going to be silver, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we are going silver all the way. One silver and one's pink. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two, two silver cars. Yes, sir. Any other discussion? The chair is none. All in favor of the motion, living on saying aye. All right. All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. Captain Taylor, proceed. The second motion, uh, there will be a small increase. Like I said, we are going from chargers to Ford SUVs. Uh, the previous approved uh, price from the commission was 77000 for everything. We're going to need an increase of $1,448 to a grand total of $78,448 to be approved uh, for the motion to increase the funds from SPLOS that we are using to purchase and to get these vehicles road ready for the county. Okay, we need a motion to purchase these two vehicles from way forward on the state contract for a total of uh, they thirty four thousand two hundred forty eight dollars. Think for a total of seventy eight thousand four hundred and forty eight dollars. Yes, sir. And that that will be completely road ready for each vehicle. Okay, that's that's the car including that's the lights, car, and lights and striping and everything. Okay, that makes it that makes it more better. Okay, is there a motion then that we increase that uh, uh, 
approve $78,448 for these two forward explorers. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion to have a second. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Tankersley, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like, sign, motions carried. Captain Taylor, thank you for all you do. We well, thank appreciate you, it. You can go back to your other job now. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll go back to the Board of Elections. To no, sir. Oh, I will book return March 12. Well, I'm going to keep on here a little bit longer. Okay. Okay. I, I, I moved. I moved. I moved to wreck the bolt the way on down. That's not good. It's, uh, that's a chart. Miss Pardon, Director Pardon at the library, if you would. Y'all keep it straight now. Chairman, Commissioners, um, I came to request approval for the purchase of a new book return uh, with the Dover Partridge funds that we have. Um, my board voted to approve uh, the quote you have in front of you for $3,800 uh, as opposed to the $5,000. Okay, we we familiar with this. We have a request from Director Pardon and the and a recommendation from the Library Board of Trustees to purchase this book return for three thousand eight hundred ninety dollars thirty six cents to be paid for out of the Dover Partridge Fund. That it. Yes, sir. Now motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Collins. Second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, the motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. you can stay with us if you want to. <laughs> All right, where am I at now? 13. Oh, it's actually 11. All right, I'm back to correct the bolt. All right. I had this thing in good shape because Captain Taylor wanted me to change it. <laughs> good afternoon. I thank you for agreeing to change it, too. You're welcome. Okay, go ahead. Um, the mission statement. The mission of the Lincoln County Board of Elections and Voter Registration is to ensure that the reg registration and election process is provided to all eligible citizens in accordance with applicable laws and rules in the most efficient, effective, and timely manner for Lincoln County, the state of Georgia, and the United States of America. Uh, due to the uh, recent changes with the legislature, we have had a lot put on us. And uh, along with all our other duties, um, we, contact, we conduct fair and impartial federal, state, and local elections to the citizens uh, registered to vote. We maintain current voter registration records and register qualified Lincoln County residents. We conduct, we conduct elections for general and runoff elections, primary, special, and municipal elections. Um, in the recent changes, we have been made transparent. Uh, we have a large number of open records requests. We have a lot of other demands for us, and I'm just asking for money for a third person, part time, to work as needed. Okay, we, uh, in case anybody don't know, we got one not maybe doing dual work, but this is the lady right here on the front row, Ms. Pinkston, who works with Director Bolton in her position over there. We know what you're asking for because we met with you in the work session last week. We understand it. Anybody that keeps up with the news or reads the newspapers is seeing what's taking place with election boards across the state. It's not uncommon. I've talked to two counties here that are in our area, Wilkes and McDuffie, that are having to do some of the same thing. Uh, what we would like to do is to, I'd like to recommend that we put $4,000 from the general fund contingency in that would be dedicated to the Board of Elections. It won't actually go in the Board of Elections budget. That she would have this four thousand dollars that she could call somebody in to help her when she needs it. And of course, we said the other day, if we want you to manage it real well, but if it happens to have to go over, then we 
we'd probably be back here doing the same thing. But, but anyway, um, I think that's what we agreed to in the work session. Is there a motion that we uh, appropriate from the general fund contingency up to four thousand dollars for the board of elections part time here? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let me know saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, and the motion is carried. Thank you, Director Bolton. And I know you have been swamped over there, and we appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 14 is the ACCG Safety Grant, Director Bruce. Chairman, commissioners, in our Thursday, last Thursday uh, work session, i let you know that we are pre-qualified for an ACCG safety grant. Uh, it's a micro grant in the amount of $2,500. There's no matching funds for it. It's due to our work with the ACCG and the safety program. Uh, we are looking at purchasing uh, two automatic external defibrillators with that money, placing one in, hopefully in the courthouse and We'll decide where the second one would be best served. Um, tonight, I'm asking for a motion to allow uh, me to complete the application and the chairman to sign it, and also to accept the funds because we know the funds are coming. And then we'll come back before you with some op options to purchase at 11. Okay, what we got is a we need a motion to uh, give me the authority to and the clerk, if she has to, to sign the paperwork on this to to. Pre-apply to sign the application. We're pre-approved, but we have to complete an right, application. To, you have to, to file for the application, and this is through our uh, safety discount with our liability insurance. It, it, we they giving us back a twenty-five hundred dollars credit, basically is what he's doing. More than but we're approving this to to, to pre-apply for it to complete the application for you to sign it and to accept the twenty-five hundred dollars. To accept the twenty-five hundred dollars. That we will be getting and we will come back to you for the expenditure. Yes, sir. All right. Do you understand? As long as you understand the motion, I'm satisfied. The clerk it. understands the motion. Hope, hope you gentlemen understand the motion. I call for a vote. Is there a motion that we accept it as presented by Director Broom? Motion, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Henderson. Second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. aye. All opposed, like, side, motion scared. Item 15 is equipment for the Recreation Department, Director Glaze. Okay, what we have is I'm needing the approval for the John Deere 1208 infield rake, grooming, and drag. Director Simo presented it last week while I was on vacation in the work session. Did you say why you was on vacation? Yes, sir. Did you get rested up? Yeah. <laughs> I get ready to go. Okay. So um, the price of it is $9,500. Okay, we familiar with this one too. Is that price still going to be $9,500? Okay. All right, then we are looking at purchasing a piece of equipment for the recreation department to work the fields in. We got a lot of activities going on over there. Of course, I get to go twice a week because my grandson's playing too. Uh, this is, we'd ask it the approval of $9,500 for this equipment. It's a John Deere, you know what it is. And it will be paid for out of special purpose local option number six. Is that a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. That's second. I'll second. Mr. Motion Chairman. by Commissioner Tagsley, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman, I have one. Commissioner Clyde. I think Robert answered the problem. I was worried about the warranty since it was a used when they rebuilt it and all that. that uh, but you said six months, right? Warranty. So that answers that. Six Thank months. You. We'll make sure it holds up. I'll put it to work. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor of the motion, let me know I'm saying aye. Uh, All opposed, like sign, motion's kid. Thank you, Director Glaze. I know you got activities going on out there, but glad you're here. Item number 16 is a text change to land code section 34 557 
One direct signal. Yes, sir, Chairman. Um, this item was um, up for discussion last week at the uh, work session. Uh, we'd like to make a change. Um, I'm asking for a um, vote to make a change to the land use code, section 34557, which talks about class A single wide uh, mobile homes in the county. Uh, I was unaware at the time um, and have been for quite some time uh, that the minimum width of a single wide mobile home to bring into the county is 16 foot wide. Uh, under 34557B1, um, you, it reads currently today that the home has to be a minimum width in excess of 16 feet. What we're asking for is a text change to read the home has a, has a minimum width of 12 feet and take out the in excess and the six to change the 16 to a 12 chairman okay so you would strike out in excess and change 16 to 12 and i have that mark up for the clerk and that's the only thing we'd change yes sir that's the only thing we'll change mr jackson with this being a text change can we do it tonight or we got to have a second reading it can be done in one reading chairman i can be done in one reading can we suspend the readings under the brazil act yes sir okay <laughs> All right, we will um, entertain a motion that we make the text change to section 34.557, parentheses 1, B1, from 16 to 12 feet. Is that a motion? I make a motion, Mr. Chairman. A second. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Tanksley. Any discussion on the motion? It also, Commissioner uh, Clyde. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry. It also includes the uh, in excess. We delete that. Word. Correct. We right. would delete the in excess and change 16 to 12. Yes, right. sir. Okay. And I'll get those changes to um, direct. I mean, Ms. Cl to the clerk for submission to um, communicate. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Any other questions? All in favor of the motion, let me know by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carried. Clerk McKelly, you will get this to Minico whenever you do that to change it in your book. Is that right? Yes. We have our director of our development authority with us tonight. We're always glad to have her with us, and uh, we're going to point you on a board if you leave here now in a few minutes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. All right. Uh, that handled item 16. Item 17, amendment to 2022 LMEG, Greg Seymour. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Um, Before you do that, I want to say LMEG is an acronym for Local Maintenance Improvement Grant. Through the Georgia Department of Transportation. Okay. Um, previously, this board uh, approved our 2022 LMEG list, which consisted of three roads. Those roads were um, Hepsiba Church Road, Maxim Road, and Lewis Family Road. Um, instead of resurfacing those three roads, um, we did what's called crack sealing, which um, is basically they take a tar um, product and um, seal all the cracks, which gives you a couple of years life um, into the roads. Um, so at this point in time, we don't see the need to have those three roads resurface. However, we did pay for the seal cracking out of the LMIG allotment from, from the county, but we're asking to amend this um, list to include Greenwood Church Road at $46,800, Grabaugh Road at $106,800, Price Reese Road at $48,000, Bass Road at $32,800, Broad Acres Road at $7,200, uh, Broad River Scenic Drive at $53,200, and Thankful Church Road at $30,800. The seal cracking uh, cost $78,480, which gives you a total cost of $404,080. Now, the LMIG funding that we do receive uh, is for $349,482.37. We've already received those funds. Uh, by law, we have to match those funds with 10% match, which is about $35,000. Um, so we're asking that we supplement the difference in the two numbers with $54,597.63 out of T-SPLOS dollars to make the numbers work, Chairman. 
Director Seymour, I, I see, am I reading this right? Uh, is this 404,000? Correct. That's not including the 78? It is including the 78. It is including the 78 that was spent for frac sale. That is correct. That is your total dollar spent. And we are having to match 10%, which we will match with our T-Splash money. So what we're doing is we're approving tonight 404000 Yes, sir. $404,080 to be spent total. $349,482.37 will okay. come from LMIG, and the balance will come from T-Splash. Right, the total is $404,080. There's 8.14 miles of road. Yes, sir. $349,430.37 will come from the local maintenance improvement grant fund from DOT. And the county will use $54,597.63 from our T-Splice funds. That's what the motion will include both of those sources of income. Is there a motion that we approve? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Say a second. I'll second Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Tankley. Any discussion? The chair has a remark to make, not a discussion. I couldn't help but to notice, Director Seymour, that uh, it looks like most all of this went to Commissioner Henderson's district. Now, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, you are, you are correct. Most of it is in District 1. Yes, sir. He said it was about time, dude. Huh? He's been neglected for a while, Chairman. He, well, he's always fighting and fussing for those folks up there, and I'm glad y'all got it worked out that he could get something for them. And Commissioner Clyde, he, he just about hit the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been whining a lot about it. <laughs> but if you go back and look at the last two years, he almost took it off. <laughs> okay, any, any discussion? All in favor of the motion, let it be known, saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. Item number 18 is hydro fracking county water well number seven, direct to Seymour. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Is that uh, seven or three? Seven. It, it's going to be seven. Um, well, on the work order, it says three, but all four of the wells are the same price, and we've decided to do all right, this. All right, this will be seven. Okay, yes, I got you. That's what I was looking at. Thank yes, you. Sir. So hydrofracking is a process in which um, a, a contractor comes in with um, high pressure water, shoots it down into the well and opens up some of the veins that have been silted over uh, over the last years. We've seen a decrease in production uh, out of all four of our wells over a period of time, uh, at least the last 20 years that I've been uh, over the water department in the county. The well seven particularly uh, has gone from about 125 gallons a minute, which is what we were getting out of it, down to less than 40 gallons a minute currently today. Um, so hydrofracking is a process where they take high pressure water, shoot it down in there, it opens those veins back up that had been closed off by silt and other debris over the years, which allows more water to flow down into the wellhead, which allows you to pump more water out of that well. Uh, the cost to do that is about $8,900 per well. Uh, I think we discussed this in the work session is that our goal uh, ultimately is to do all four of them. However, um, my recommendation is, is let us do one, which is the least productive, it's lost the most production over the years, see what kind of production we can get out of it before we decide to do the other three. Um, so I'm asking the chairman, I'm mean, asking this board to approve uh, me to do the hydro fracking at $8,900 to well number seven. And those funds would be paid for out of uh, the water fund. Uh, we have a um, line item in our water budget in the reserve for repairs. And so that money would come from that account, Chairman. Okay, we've heard it from Oconee Well Drilling for the, we call it hydro fracking. Boy, yes. that's a good one. On County Well number three, for $8,900, it will be paid for out of the water reserve fund. Is there a motion? We'll move, Mr. Chairman. Second. I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Clyde. I asked this a little bit, but when they when they do that and you end up upsetting the water and get silk, you know, and dirty water, they do flush it out, supposedly, before. Yes, we sir. And, and I've already talked to uh, 
Mr. Elder, who is Dan Elder, owns Oconee Well Driller. And, and so what they'll do is they've got a subcontractor that actually does the, the hydro fracking. And so I talked to him um, yesterday. And so what they'll do is they'll come in about two or three days prior to um, the actual hydro fracking being done, and they'll pull the pump out. The subcontractor will video the whole well and the shaft to see where those cracks are at, where they can localize exactly where they're at. And then after that, Dan will put the pump back in and then we'll do a 72 hour pump on that well. So they'll pump that well for 72 hours uh, straight and flush all of that out, out of there before we, before we put it back in production. So we shouldn't be getting any calls about no, the dirty water. And, 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 and we've got a filter plant at Double Branches that filters sand and anthracite filter plant which filters all that out anyway. <laughs> to go to no road state. <laughs> any other discussion? Commissioner Tankers. Uh, <clears throat> Director Seymour. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Cooper applied here for the cover my question, but I did have one more. Yes, sir. If this fracking generated any discovery of oil or natural gas, would the county have the right to that? Um, that would be a question for council and probably <laughs> Mr. Reed. <laughs> <laughs> we work out here with we just have that <laughs> 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 Any other questions? All in favor of the motion, let it be known with saying aye. Uh, All opposed, <laughs> like sign, motion's carried. So we're going to get our hydro cracking. <laughs> Number 19 is the update on the Verizon Tower of Double Branches Road, Director Seymour. Yes, sir. Um, at the request of the chairman um, and several of you on this board uh, <laughs> about the um, activation of the Double Branches Verizon Tower, um, I did make contact um, last week. Um, and we discussed this in the work session that uh, that tower has been given us about three or four dates that um, it would be active and as of today it's still not active. Um, the chairman asked me to look into the process of uh, calling the bond in um, to have them remove the tower. Um, and so I sent them a letter, I mean an email, uh, there I copied the chairman on that email, uh, requesting a date and that we were going to start the process. I think the chairman also uh, responded to the email. Uh, I did get an email on um, Monday um, that the activation date is set for April the 29th. Um, that's the date that they're giving us right now. That's two weeks. Um, and so um, that's the date. As of the 20, I think the 30th, um, their time period to have it activated will be up and this board will have the option to call that bond in if so choose, if y'all so choose to do so. Um, so that's kind of where we're at with the tower. Uh, it has been up. Antennas have been on it um, since early, early February. Um, can't really get an answer as to why it's taken this long uh, to activate. One of the guys that I talked to told me it was it should have been up and running way before now. Um, so I can't give you an answer on that. Um, I don't understand. It looks like to me they bid to make a profit. The only way they're going to get it, things is get. I don't understand it, but, but they have gone from February, March, now to April the... April the 29th is the date that I was... 29th. Yes, sir. And I've got that in writing in the email, Chairman. Okay, so if if they don't come on April 29th, because I know all of us are getting calls or running into people wanting to know when it's coming on, and we look sort of bad when we... Tell them it's going to happen in February. Then we tell them it's going to happen in March. Then we tell them it's going to happen in April 29th. And I know we can't control that. I mean, I understand the fact we can't control it. But maybe we can control calling their bond together, and they don't want that to happen. Yes, sir. Because that messes them up. But, but that would be an act of the board to do that. But I would, I would like to travel down the road that if they don't have this thing on the 29th without a real good reason not having it on, that, that we come back at the next meeting and, and, and call the ball. Mr. Chair. Yeah, just to, give you a, just to give you a quick synopsis, what the code says is that 
from the day we issued the building permit, which was November the 18th, they have 180 days from that day to activate or this board has the option to call that bond in. So you would be well within your rights uh, next commission meeting if it wasn't up and running to do, do so. Commissioner Clyde. I was going to ask out uh, Robbie too. Uh, didn't, don't we still hold him back some permits they want? We are. Yeah, this the, is approved. Uh, yes, sir. The, the, the 220 or Amity um, permit, I mean, uh, rezoning that y'all approved okay. several months ago, one of the conditions of that permit was that we would not issue a permit until this tower was up and activated. So, you know, in theory, if you call the bond in, it would never be activated. We wouldn't be able to build one on 220. And that's not what we want. We no. want towers up. We're not, we not trying to throw roadblock. We need towers up, particularly the north end of Lincoln County needs sales. And we express that to them all the time. We don't have anything in the north end. And, and they need cell towers in the north end where Commissioner Henderson to get off of that. He's fussing about needing cell towers in the north end of the county. But his people are <laughs> about And we got to try to try to get them to send some to, to the north end. Okay, that, I just wanted uh, Director Seymour to give us an update on that tower. So we'll proceed with item number 20. Is the Reed Water Contract, Director Seymour. Yes, sir, Chairman. Uh, this is a uh, contract that was before this board several months back. Uh, Y'all approved the contract. Um, however, we've made a couple of changes to the contract. Um, and so it needed to come back before you for approval. Um, and I can just tell you real quick what the changes were. It's not, a not big major changes, but one of them is, is that uh, we would pay Mr. Reed a $50 per month uh, per well on 8 and 9. Uh, above and beyond the 35 cents per thousand um, and that $50 would raise $10 every five years and then the 35 cents per thousand uh, would increase um, three cents every five years. This is a 20 year contract with a um, option to renew um, after the 20 years. Um, Okay, our attorney, Mr. Jackson, drew the contract up. It was looked at by Mr. Reed and his attorney, Mr. Hammond, and they have all agreed to it. I think we pretty much agreed to it. We went into it in depth last week at our work session. I don't see any reason to prolong it. Is there a motion that we approve? Mr. Attorney, you you satisfied with us? Proceed with this, right? Absolutely, Chairman. They have motion that we approve the sale of water rights to take and use water and lease on the premises between the Lincoln County and Mr. Reed. So move. So move, Mr. Chairman. You got a motion to have second. Second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, is none. All in favor, most living on saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried. Item number 21 is technology and media service director appointment. As you know, Director Dockery moved to Dawsonville, Georgia, a few months ago. We were fortunate to find Johnny Walton. And he had moved back home. We, he came in, filled his shoes, worked with him for a couple of weeks before he left. Because he didn't need a whole lot. As you know, he was the IT director in Aiken County, South Carolina for some 30-odd years, 37 years, I think. We hired him in a, as a, in an interim position until we could advertise it and go through the process. We have done that, and I would like to recommend that we drop interim off of that and make Mr. Johnny Walton the county's director of technology and media services. Now motion that we accept my recommendation. I made the motion. Mr. Second. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Tankson. Any discussion on the motion? There being none, all in favor of the motion, let it known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, and the motion's carried. Congratulations. Appreciate you. Unified Development Council Authority, that is a uh, position under the 
CSRE Regional Development Commission is a statewide uh, deal. Every RC across the state has to have one. You got a little paperwork on it. Uh, we talked about it. Commissioner Clyde has, has uh, recommended Mr. Joe Jackson in the Amity community of Lincoln County at Locksborough Subdivision where he lives. Mr. Jackson is a former county commissioner on the Augusta County Board of uh, Augusta Commission, Richmond County Commissioners. Back in his days, he currently works for Columbia County, but he lives in Lincoln County. He and his wife and family. Uh, we would like to submit that name, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Joe Jackson, and we would like to appoint uh, Christine McNeese. She is the director of the Development Authority, and the director of the Development Authority pretty much since the inception of this has served in, on the regional, I mean, served on the, on the council, and they have both accepted the appointment if the commission sees fit to appoint them. So that's our recommendation that these two people be appointed. They meet six times a year, every other month at 10 o'clock in the morning at the RC in Augusta. So, uh, and, and we haven't had anybody on for a while, and they, they notified we need to get somebody on. Is there a motion that we accept the recommendation to appoint Christine McNeese and Joe Jackson to the Unified Development Council? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, if none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, motion carried. Item 23 is uh, we familiar with, and that's a request from Jeff and Sherry Easter and Little Roy and Lizzie. This is a, these festivals have been going on for years. The Lewis family, Little Roy, Lizzie's is up in the upper 20s now. Uh, they bring a lot of people into the county for two weekends. And they promote Lincoln County all over by putting out brochures at all their events all over the country and, and, and talking it up and bringing tourists to Lincoln County. And this is something that we've done every year. And we discussed it the other day, and I think the recommendation uh, would be that we give both $2,000, for a total of $4,000. Jeff and Sherry would have it for their festival, Little Roy and Lizzie for their festival. Um, this says that the Lewis Family Bluegrass Festival held at Elijah Clark State Park. That's not correct. That has been moved from the Elijah Clark State Park to Lewis Family Road at the Lewis Family Home Place. So both events will be held those two weekends and consecutive weekends, trying to keep people here uh, for a good while. This will be paid out of the hotel motel unrestricted. Yes, sir. Uh, far from the hotel motel tax. Is there a motion that we give these two people this from the hotel motel tax for the promotion of tourism? So moved, Mr. Chairman. That's second. I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Collins, second by Commissioner Cloud. Any discussion? Chair, here is none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like, sign, motion. Good. I'll ask the clerk to read the Provider Appreciation Day proclamation real quick. Yes, sir. A proclamation. Whereas Child Care Aware of America and other organizations nationwide are recognizing child care providers on May 6, 2022, and whereas over half the children under the age of six nationwide are estimated to spend some time in a non-parental care arrangement on a weekly basis, which provides critical enrichment opportunities and nurtures development for children of all backgrounds and is a vital building block of our state economy. And whereas the COVID-19 pandemic created tremendous hardship for child care providers of the families of Lincoln County, who depend on them, who have continued to meet the needs of families while risking their health and financial stability to remain open. And whereas the state of Georgia recognizes these hardships and has provided much needed relief to providers to help sustain the viability 
of child care with the Child Care and Development Block Grant and the Child Care Stabilization Grants that were introduced during the pandemic. And whereas our future depends on the quality of the early childhood experiences provided to the young children today, support for high quality child care represents a worthy commitment to our children's future. And whereas at the request of Commissioner Clyde of the District 3, that this proclamation be delivered to all known daycare providers in Lincoln County. Now, therefore, I, Walker T. Norman, Chairman of the Lincoln County Board of Commissioners, hereby proclaim Friday, May 6, 2022, as Provider Appreciation Day in Lincoln County, Georgia, and urge all citizens to recognize child care providers for their important work. Okay, she's read the proclamation, and this will be mailed out to eight or ten providers that we know of. Uh, it won't look exactly like that when it's mailed to them. It'll be on the official beige-looking stuff with the seal on all of them, and they will be mailed to, I think it's eight or nine providers that we know of that will take this. So that will be done, and they will have it by that day. All right, is that a motion to adjourn? Before I adjourn, though, and that's the hardest motion ever. You still made that motion quick. <laughs> I would like to recognize Commissioner Tankersley and his bow tie. <laughs> now, I like that bow tie. He's, he's sporting out here tonight. Y'all look at that. Be sure that camera gets on him. He, uh, well, he we're going to have to borrow that bow tie. Is that a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Tankers. Any discussion on the motion, Chair? Here's none. All in favor of the motion, let me know I'm saying aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion is carried, and we are adjourned. Thank you.